Hello, my name is Patrick Luck. I am a Java tutor here with Chag Tutors, and tonight I want to tell you about tonight's lesson, which is composite, composite variables. In other words, a variable that contains multiple distinct values. Now, most uh, students in computer programming are familiar with the traditional variable, which, in my case, I have an integer right here. And, you know, a variable is just simply a slot in memory that holds a value of some sort. In my case, I defined it as integer, which means it holds uh, positive or negative whole numbers only. However, there's other variables. You could have uh, variables such as doubles, which hold uh, decimal placements. Uh, you can have uh, characters, which hold uh, letters of the alphabet or printed characters, for example. Um, some other data types of variables might be things such as a byte which represents a computer byte in memory. So there's a lot of variable types out there but the point is every variable is a slot of memory that holds a value for the purposes of this demonstration. And that's what I have here next to the red arrow. This is just a regular variable here so not a lot special about this guy right here. He just holds one single whole number and that's all he's interested in holding and that's all he ever will hold because if he holds more than that uh, we're going to get a compiler error in most languages but almost every language we're gonna have some sort of a runtime error and our program will crash if integer i holds anything but one integer. Now tonight's lesson is about composite variables so basically what is a composite variable? Well a composite variable is a variable that contains multiple distinct values. Some examples of composite variables may include arrays, lists, hashes, or records, depending on what you're working with. So if we flip back to the whiteboard here, these guys right here are examples of composite variables. Well, what makes these composite variables? Well, glad you asked. You'll notice first one, our first guy here, integer ints, he is an array of whole numbers and he has one, two, three. So that means that this variable right here is already con containing three distinct values. Just like this one below here, ints, which is an array list or a collection, he has one, two, three again, distinct variables. So let's look at that on the code side of things. So what can we do with things like composite variables? Because it's not really you know, practical to just talk about a composite variable. The definition is pretty simple, but the application is really what matters with our composite variables. So let's take a look at a Java function here. This is one example of what we might do with a composite variable. So let's go ahead, let's declare integer array again. But this time we're just going to call it, we're going to declare it as an empty array this time around. So what's this 5 mean? This 5 means that there are, we're getting 5 memory slots with this array. Now if we try to write six Java language will throw what's called an index out of bounds exception. Um, other languages will have some sort of similar runtime exception so you can't put more than five integers in this composite variable but this one is declared that we're allowed five slots. So they're zero based in Java so if we want to assign to the first slot we would do it like this if we want to assign to the second slot, we do it like this. And, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, just to give you an example here on this one, you don't have to go 0, 1, 2, 3. You know, 3 can be negative 1 ints. 
But now, don't do this. If you attempted to go This is going to cause an exception in this case. Likewise, you can't go negative with this either because that's also going to cause an exception. I mean, it's just not possible. You can't have less than zero memory slots. You have to have at least one just by definition, just like you can't buy a carton of eggs with negative one eggs in it. You know, if you're going to buy a carton of eggs, and usually it'll have 12 eggs, you would hope, but at least it's going to have zero. But it will never, a carton of eggs will never have negative one eggs, just like your arrays will never have negative one arrays. Well, okay, this is all nice, but we were talking application here, so let's talk about application real quick. So we have this array here, and a lot of times with arrays, we're going to just work on them with loops, right? So integer i, ints, we might just go system.out.println i to string. And this little simple program would print, you know, this would print out 1, 2, 6, negative 1, 100 to the Java console. It's not just arrays, of course. We could do something like this with other data types. We could do array list. We could do hash set. We could do linked list. Result set is another class that, you know, because we mentioned records. Uh, the point is, is that this is a variable that holds multiple values. And usually we use these in situations where we're trying to hold like values. So for example, um, let's say rather than integers, we want a list of names. Very common in a database, you might have a phone record. So you might go names.add John Doe names dot add Jane Doe names dot add oh, Porky Pig because I can't think of anything you know we can, we can do Bugs Bunny and so you know we got a list of names here and then we're holding them here because we want to do some we want to sort them in alphabetical order so we might do collections that sort names and now our names are sorted in alphabetical order in other words they're going to be bugs bunny first it would then be jane doe followed by john doe and then lastly porky pig after the sort so this is another example of where we would use a composite variable um, you would not be able to do an operation like this if, for example, you had string John So, you know, here's an example of using regular variables to hold the exact same names. You can see that the problem with this, of course, is that one, our code is getting bloated here. So we have code bloat. And then number two, we have no ability to sort them. At least not an easy way. I mean, sure, there's a way it can be done. Don't get me wrong. But there's no readily available way to sort these because they're in their own individual basis. We can't add to the list either. Um, we cannot remove from the list. The limitations literally go on and on. So this is why we use comp composite variables to avoid these situations and allows us to group sets of data types together and then we can manipulate them. We can loop through them. We can sort them. We can add, remove to them. 
So, from Tag Tutors, I, my name is Patrick Luck. I'm a Java programmer, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have a good night, folks.